Well, this is my portable uh, version of the Lukowski coil, um, Lukowski multi-wave oscillator. Now, obviously, this is not a true one. This would be like a portable version of it. It's made by Amazing One. Dot com out in New Hampshire, an engineering firm. You can buy them on there. I think they're about a thousand dollars or so, whatever. Um, what I did in the back, there's a couple tungsten rods. You adjust the spark gap gap for the Tesla coil, and normally they say set it on um, eighth inch. Um, and as the test the tungsten rods get consumed, which I have extra ones, you adjust the spark plug gap. But somebody told me to set the coil at a sixteenth of an inch, and it runs a lot quieter. So I tried that out, and I just turned it on, and it is quieter. And I'm probably going to use it a lot more often now because it's not scaring my pet, my cats. My cats in here to hear this, they go, ah. but um, I'm probably going to use it a lot more often now. So flip it on. And you can smell the ozone coming off of it. But what's weird about it is that it doesn't affect this light. Um, I've noticed that if a light has one of those dimmers on it, it could be about 15 feet away. The light will start going low, medium, high, off. It'll start or start going off and on. If it has a dimmer on it, it's a, one of those dimmer lights that has like a, um, you know, automatic dimmer. Like if you touch the light, it dims. This thing will affect it. I've also noticed that one of my um, Spooky 2 generators, which uh, I'm using a remote on, it knocks it offline. I'm going to see if it does it with this. Um, being set this way with the 16th of an inch gap. What I did was I used um, a drill bit like that to set the gap. It's the easiest way to do it. There's a, In the back, there's a couple tungsten rods with a couple screws. And you re, you, they, they wear out after a while. That, that makes your spark gap for the Tesla coil. This is a Tesla coil. And actually, they did. this is nowhere near the true multi-wave oscillator. But they did have what you call portable versions of it. They used to have, like, um, carry them in a briefcase or something. Or not a briefcase, but like a case. And you can haul them around. This is basically like that size. Not exactly the same, but they did have versions like this. I think they're somewhat effective. I think this is more effective than the Tesla Violet Ray. You can see that violet color coming off of here. The Violet Ray was just a simple bulb um, that has been labeled as a quack device in 1952 by the American Medical Association. But interestingly enough, the Violet Ray is still used in cosmetics to um, heal blemishes and reduce wrinkles and things. They're fine with that, but no medical use. Only like aesthetic facial toning or removing wrinkles and blemishes. So it's like it's it's almost hinting that the violet ray or this type of energy that comes off of here is a healing force. But now it's known, you know, the Medical American, American Medical Association will say, no, no, no. But, you know, the fact that it's used in uh, beautician shops, not this thing, but the actual... Violet Ray Wand. This is actually more powerful than that. They use that for beauty and stuff. Um, you know, tells you that it's it's not something that is doing nothing to the body. It's actually that's really what's supposed to happen with this device. It's supposed to strengthen the body. I know there's several theories about how this works. One of them is the freq it puts out an array of frequencies through these coils. And again, this is not a real one. I'll explain what a real one is. It puts out an array of frequencies that actually bring up the, the, the frequency of the cells. That theory, I don't think is actually 100 I don't think that's all correct. Um, another theory, and this is where I think it's correct, it's bringing in and concentrating energies in and around us. Because even as you notice how these all have a gap like this, there's a gap. If you took one of these coils like this, and you put this around a plant... And you had the gap facing away from the sun, and it tilted towards the sun, but near the base of the plant. It helps the plant grow better. Just the coil itself, when it's wrapped around a plant, it has to be have that gap, because it actually works like a capacitor, and the coil has to be copper. So, 
the copper has some kind of attributes where it brings in energies in and around us that we don't see. Now, this is all from Tesla, okay? And I know it's George Lukowski, but George Lukowski really got the ideas from Tesla. I freaking don't want to knock, you know, some people get mad at me saying that, but that's really the truth behind it. Um, but... You know, George Lukowski did all the work to design a multi-wave oscillator. And actually, a real multi-wave oscillator has, it's a huge device. It's maybe not quite as, well, it's probably not as high as this uh, chest of drawers here, but it's probably wider, more depth this way, maybe about that high, and maybe about that width. And it's got three Tesla coils in it. And then it has wires hooked to a receiving um, and sending Tesla coil that has an array that's even bigger than this, and you go between those two coils. So, like, it'd be one on this side and one on this side, and you're between those two, and this, and the array is much bigger than this, probably twice the diameter, almost. And um, it, it uses a total of five Tesla coils. But even when George Lukowski got the idea originally from Nikola Tesla, it didn't work, and Nikola Tesla went back and showed them how to make it work. Then it did work. And actually, this thing does not conquer disease directly. Not this one, maybe. This one might do something somewhat, but the original one was uh, curing people of um, terminal cancer. It was reverse aging people. Hair was growing back in. Uh, gray hair was going away. Wrinkles were going away. What I think is going on is actually it is bringing in energies in and around us. One of the biggest indications and proofs of that is that when they put the device, like a real test, one of these real ones, not this, not this one, this is kind of like a, you know, a minor one, a little portable one. They put a real uh, Lukowski multi-wave oscillator, and they put it in a Faraday cage because it was interfering with electronic equipment around, around them. They found that it did not work as, nearly as well. It worked somewhat, but not nearly as well. So that pretty much, you know, disproves the theory that it's just work. It's just bringing in frequencies into the body and raising the frequency of the cells. It's pulling in something around us that we don't see. Energies in and around us. Sounds a little freaking hokey, a little bit, but you know what? A lot of things that Tesla did. You know, I mean, even today, we all we all use electricity, correct? We all understand, like you know, positive positive the ground and the negative and you know amps and volts and things like that and we use electrical appliances every day but nobody really understands uh, we we show it pictorially like the electricity is flowing down the wire right but nobody really understands it exactly it's just that we just use it right and we understand how to make the electricity how to wire it up and all this garbage but you know it's the same type of thing it's like you use your cell phone do you understand everything that's going on in there, really? Do you really understand it? I mean, maybe you don't understand basics. This is kind of like a new concept. You know, people don't realize that most matter that in the universe is not visible. You know, I know Albert Einstein said that, and I don't want to play like I'm Albert Einstein, but I'm just saying that's a fact. Most matter in the universe is not visible. So this thing can actually, even this little one can actually, you know, I noticed it can probably extend life and probably regenerate, you know, cells better and make you feel more healthy. I noticed that I feel more energized when I'm in front of it. I haven't been using it for quite a while because it scares the hell out of my cats. And they still got scared when I turned this on, but not nearly as bad. But um, I'm going to turn it on anyway. It's another. It's in a different room at the house, so <laughs> they're not, not going to annoy them that much. Close the door. And use it for maybe 10, 15 minutes a day. But I noticed with the spark pad plug gap, the spark, it's not a spark plug gap, it's a spark gap between two tungsten rods. It's in the back there. I, you know, it's, I think it's on one of my other videos on this subject, but it's just a couple tungsten rods that have a gap. And you got a screw on each tungsten rod where you can loosen it up and tighten the screw again and adjust the gap. So I put it at, instead of an eighth inch, I put it at a sixteenth of an inch. Somebody told me about that. It does run quieter and smoother. So I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. So I'm going to use it more. But um, the real one, I don't think anybody even sells a real one. I know I got the plans from uh, Tony and Bruno in Italy 
for the exact plants how because they they found three original ones in a box. And a lot of this technology was interrupted by World War II. Like George's Lukowski in 1942 got out of Paris before the Germans invaded Paris. He went to New York. That he had a couple of his devices in New York already for a little while. One was in a hospital and one was with a urologist. And it was it was like a miracle device. It was working great. So George Lukowski goes to New York. Not much, just I don't know how many days or weeks after, but a very short time after. He gets hit by a limousine and um, in a hit and run accident. Driver takes off. George Lukowski obviously was not seriously, seriously hurt. Because he wanted to go back to his equipment, which was the Lukowski coils, and heal up. He didn't want. He did not want to go to the hospital. He went to the hospital and he died. Immediately after he died, they took the bulky wave oscillator, which his his device. You know, you know it's Tesla and Lukowski together. But you know, I, I don't want to not say that Lukowski, not give Lukowski for credit for this, but. You know, that'd be really piss poor for me to say that. But it, the truth is, it was out of Tesla's mind. You know, Glukowski made it, but it really was out of Tesla's mind. Um, and Tesla had hands-on input with it, too. But uh, after Glukowski was killed by the hit-and-run, you know, or killed in a hospital after the hit-and-run accident with the limousine, these two devices, the two devices, the one that was in a hospital and one with the urologist, were taken away. And never seen from again. People wanted to use it. They said, no, it's not available. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there's stuff going on that they just don't want the human. This certain kind, and it's not just all about money. There's probably something really sinister going on even beyond that. And maybe it's not the devil, but maybe it's some other something else. I don't want to get into all down those rabbit holes, but... There is probably something going on where they don't want the human race to live, you know, 300 years of each and, you know, like they did, you know, because we probably got the capability of doing that. We probably got the technology. And I'll give you a hint. I saw this in Business Insider a few years ago or so. Tech billionaires, tech billionaires claiming and bragging that they're going to live to be at least a thousand years old or forever. And then they're showing all the vitamin pills they're taking and the, and the herbal foods and organic foods. And I'm like, yeah, right. You're not telling you, you're, you're not telling really what you're doing. They're doing this with electronic device. They have methods. I know about some of the methods. I also know about a set of frequencies that I don't know if you could purchase them now, but I know I can't release them. But it's from Pulse Technologies. It's uh, in a certain array of frequencies that you run in a certain sequence that will insert the glutathione gene directly into DNA, all your DNA. But you got to do it with plasma technology with a true rife machine. I haven't, been do I haven't been doing that, though, but, you know, I got this stuff. I mean, I just used the power zapper a real lot. <laughs> I figured that simple thing worked freaking work fine for me. I think that thing actually does a lot, even though it's very simple. I use it 12 hours a day. A frequency with positive offset 9.5 to 10 volts. I think it does the job, man. It takes longer to do it, but if I'm using it 12 hours a day, I figure what the hell. But I'm going to start using this thing now that it adjusted the spark plug gap. Not the spark plug gap. The spark gap. I, I, I work on cars, so I call it spark plug. Just threw that out there. But um, it's... Well, cars, engineering, whatever. Same damn thing, right? What the hell do you think? Who do you think made these cars? Engineers, right? But... It's a spark gap between two tungsten rods, and I got extra. I got loads of extra ones, so I can run this thing forever um, because I can, um, you know, I got the extra tungsten rods as they get consumed. I can replace them. The other thing is, uh, if the spark plug, the spark gap is too wide, uh, this thing will shut off. So it's good to have it a little tighter too, but it does seem to run smoother and quieter. And this one is nowhere near as quiet as a real one. A real one is not really noisy at all. You hear a little bzzz, you know, it's like nothing. This one's a lot noisier, but it did quiet down a lot more when I adjusted it down to a sixteenth of an inch. I know from AmazingOne.com, who sells this, they'll tell you an eighth inch. Somebody online told me about a sixteenth. I tried a sixteenth. I said, well, I like the sixteenth better. It seems to work better, so... And, you know, if you get the spark 
gets the gap gets too wide, this thing will shut off. And I, I wouldn't run it more than 15 minutes at a time. You know, you, you want to keep everything keeping cool in there. You don't want to wear the damn thing out because if I think if you keep all the other components in here not getting overheated, the only problem you're gonna, only thing that's going to wear out and consume is that those the tungsten rods, which you got loads of. So I think the unit itself is going to pretty much last forever. You know, maybe as long as you don't abuse it or run it like real, real long periods of time. If you're just, you know, you'll run it. 10, 15 minutes, you let it cool down. Say you want to do an hour a day, split it up into four 15-minute intervals. I'm not going to do an hour a day. When I first got this, I was using a lot more, but it was knocking out my Spooky 2 Rife generators, and it was knocking, it was, my cats were just, Bleh! but it is a hell of a lot more quiet now, so I think I'll run it now. I'm going to go check on my Spooky generator, see if it's got knocked out. If it didn't, I'm really definitely going to run this thing every single day.